Eduardo Molinari, one under 70. Eduardo, just talk about how you played today. I think uh, I got off to a good start and then bogeyed five from nowhere, uh, double six. Uh, it was a bit unlucky, I think. And then uh, I started to play some really good golf. I stiffed a couple of iron shots. Uh, I was lucky on 10 to, to hold a bunker shot, which was a, a little too hard. And then uh, same thing down the last few, hit, kept hitting good shots. Uh, I got very unlucky on 17 because I think I was trying to go like in the right rough with Diver and had a bad lie, but managed to get a four. And then I think it was uh, solid pretty much. Um, it looks like conditions are starting to get harder. What do you think the afternoon group is going to face? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a little bit harder. I mean, first thing in the morning, there was no wind at all. Uh, the greens were firm, but not silly firm. And uh, it was just, I think, very difficult with the pace of the greens this morning uh, because obviously they were freshly cut and it was running like crazy. But then, you know, you just adjust to it pretty quickly and uh, and then you go. Right here. I, I knew this is, I should know the answer to this, but when was the last time you and Francesco were kind of in contention at the same tournament together? Um, good question. I think we both had a very good start at the Open Championship in uh, 2014. And then I think I finished top 10 and he just missed top 10 in the end. So I would say I would say that one because then he came over to play PGA Tour full time. I stayed in Europe and we, we only played a handful of events uh, back home as well together. And it's been a while since you've been over here. Mm -hmm. I think 2015 was your last yeah. event. Yeah. Have you guys been able to spend some time together? I'm sure you haven't over the last year. You're yeah, I mean, last year and a half has been very difficult. Um, I hadn't seen Francesco since uh, the week before Christmas in 2019, up until last week, so like a year and a half. So that's why I came a day early and uh, I went to visit him on Sunday in LA, where he's uh, now living with the family. And uh, we just had a good time and then we played practice round together on both Tuesday and Wednesday. And it's just, you know, we're gonna, have, gonna go and have dinner tonight together. It's just nice to, to get the chance to, you know, speak with him, see him again and, and just spend time with him. Juan? Y Eduardo, hacemos como, como con Francesco. Te pregunto en español, me contestas en italiano. Vale, como quieras. Sí, perfecto, pues eso, ok. Te contesto en español si quieres. No, no, en italiano. No, en italiano, perfecto. Sí. Entonces, cuéntame un poco las sensaciones de volver a un mayor en Estados Unidos y cómo ha sido el día de hoy, qué es lo que ha funcionado. È stato sicuramente bello ritornare a giocare un Major, e, stamattina ero partito giocando bene, poi ho fatto un bogey, un doppio un po' stupidi, e poi di nuovo ho continuato a giocare bene, ho imbucato qualche pat le seconde nove, che è sempre importante in una gara del genere, e direi che tutto sommato è un buon inizio. Y el hecho de que haya bueno, tres italianos aquí y el volver a jugar con tu hermano en una competición y estar bien en, en, en la tabla de clasificación, ¿no? Sí, sí, obviamente es siempre bello tornar a jugar con, con Francesco, aunque porque él ahora juega casi solo más torneos de, de altísimo nivel, así que decir que jugar un torneo con él es siempre un buen signo y creo que también Guido sea en la buena estrada. Ya un par de años atrás yo decía que, que Guido es el más joven, el italiano joven más promettente de todos y creo que, que lo se verá en los próximos años. ¿Te pusiste objetivos para esta semana o era más hacerlo para disfrutar? No, creo que estoy jugando muy bien en Tia Green. He tenido un poco de problemas con el pat en los últimos dos o tres años. Hoy seguramente he patado bastante bien. E creo que como estoy jugando, no me son puesto objetivos, pero puedo hacer una, una buena semana. Muy bien, gracias. Gracias. Dylan, on the right. Yeah. Yeah, just for American fans that might have lost track of you the last few years, yeah. I know you doing, I guess, a variety of things between playing, coaching, mm -hmm. strategizing, yeah. building. Like, how would you describe at a higher level your career the last few years? Well, you know, my main focus was still on playing, despite the, the result wouldn't suggest it. But uh, obviously, especially the last year and a half with COVID, I had a lot of downtime as well. And I just, you know, managed to, to spend it properly rather than just sitting in front of a TV. And uh, obviously the, the stat thing is, uh, is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, it's getting more and more traction. I mean, obviously Fitzy was the first one to start using it. And uh, every week I've got, you know, if it's in Europe, I've got probably 15 guys using it. And even over here, there's like six or seven each week. So it's definitely getting bigger and bigger players speaking about it. And it just keeps me entertained. But as I said, my, my main focus is still on, on playing golf for a few more years. And, um, and you know, as I said, uh, my putting has been very poor in the last three, four years. 
my ball striking has been as good as 2010, 2011 when I was playing really well. So hopefully I can have find a, a decent week on the greens this week and, and be up there until the end. Awesome. Thanks, Eduardo. Good play Thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Brian. Thank you.